Hey everyone, Christian here and today I'd like to show you OrbStack, a brand new, fast, light and powerful way to run containers and VMs on macOS. With OrbStack you can say bye bye to Docker Desktop and to other programs like VirtualBox because it is so much better and faster than all of them. So let's get into it, I'm going to talk a bit about the program, explain what it makes different than all of the other tools and we'll also have a look at some of the unique features for deploying containers and VMs on Mac. Like like the seamless integration of file sharing and the network stack, as well as the Kubernetes integration, automatic HTTPS certificates for local deployments and some other cool stuff that you will love as a tech nerd, trust me. <laughs> So yeah, tech nerds like us, we love software that helps us to do our day-to-day -day work. And I quickly want to show you another nice tool, which I know those of you who work in IT will absolutely love. Because if you're managing resources and assets in a company, you know this is a big challenge, especially if the company has hundreds of thousands of servers, network devices, applications, and other assets. This is exactly where Fathom comes into play, the sponsor of today's video. Fathom is a platform that discovers and maps all your IT infrastructure like servers and business applications within minutes, no matter if it's on-premise or in the cloud. And it's one of the fastest solutions in the market that solves the challenge of understanding how a change of your infrastructure will impact your business and IT operations. Fathom has many amazing features, but one thing that I believe stands out from the rest is that it discovers all the assets entirely by itself and it groups them into business applications, completely agentless. And it also does continuous IT documentation that is fully dynamic, which is super cool because documentation in IT is so freaking important and hard to do as well. You can use it for many practical use cases such as change management, impact analysis, CMDB, cloud migration, data center training transformation, DRBC, cybersecurity and many more. And it starts with an entry-level self-service speedboats plan, which allows you to manage 100 servers for 10 grand annually, which is, by the way, a fair deal in a market filled with other notoriously expensive tools. It also has a 14 days trial where there is no sales call needed. So just check it out and start managing your IT infrastructure dependencies like a pro. Of course, you will find a link to it in the description of the video. All right, so let's learn more about the program OrbStack. You can find all the information on the official website orbstack.dev and there you can see the developers position this as some sort of replacement for Docker Desktop. So it's a light, fast and easy way to run containers on your local Mac device as well as some Linux virtual machines, but we will also have a look at this in a few minutes. The cool thing about this program is once you install it, you don't have to learn an entirely new system. So all the commands you know from from Docker as well as the Docker file and everything just works the same way in OpStack. It just replaces the layer of how the containers are managed on your system. By the way, if you want to learn more about the architecture, OpStack also has some great documentation that explains it in a bit more detail. So how the containers and VMs are managed on the Mac and why it is faster. You can see those services are written in a mixture of Swift, Go, Rust and C. And it does have some pretty cool optimizations and features that allow this application to act much faster than Docker Desktop. And it also comes with some additional cool features that are very interesting for developers like file sharing, custom dynamic caching and optimization to provide a fast bind to mount points and access to the Mac files. And it also does have some very interesting networking features. I will also show you in a bit more detail. And it's also written with security in mind. You can also find some speed metrics on the website to actually see how much faster it is than Docker Desktop. So for example, if you build a Docker container on Docker Desktop that would take 19 minutes on OrbStack, it's doing the same task in just seven minutes. And it also doesn't take as much CPU power and a battery consumption from your Mac. So when you are working with a MacBook Pro, for example, and you're developing containers for Kubernetes or Docker, OrbStack is just the better technology that will not drain so much battery and you can do all the things in a much more efficient way. To install OpStack on your local Mac, just click on Get OpStack and then you can download the application and go through the installation procedure. Or you can put this one line command in your terminal if you're using Homebrew. Homebrew is 
just a great application on macOS and that is automatically installed. It, by the way, also runs alongside with Docker Desktop, so you don't need to worry about Docker Desktop being replaced or anything being damaged. OpStack can even migrate all the containers you're running on Docker Desktop to OpStack as well with all of the networks and volumes attached to them, so it's very, very simple and easy. If you open the application, you can see on the left side, you have a menu for browsing your containers, your volumes, your images. As you can see, I currently don't have any running containers, but there is a quick example of how you can do this. So let's just copy the command, run this, and then we can open the localhost in my browser. And yeah, here we are. That's our container that we have just deployed and it just took about a millisecond. And when you have a few containers running on your Mac, you can also inspect the log file, search for something, you can delete the logs, or you open a terminal directly inside the running container where you can do some administrative tasks, access files, whatever you want to do with it. And if you click on the files menu, it also opens the finder where you can see all the files in the container just on your local Mac file browser. So it couldn't be easier than, than that. <laughs> and if you want to run Kubernetes, you can also turn on Kubernetes and it automatically starts deploying a very lightweight Kubernetes cluster on your local Mac device. So there you can see if you go to containers, there is a new drop down menu for Kubernetes where it already deployed the core DNS, the local path provisioner. So that is necessary to run Kubernetes. And then you can start deploying your manifests or experiment with Helm charts and just use your local Mac as a testing Kubernetes cluster to develop applications in a container orchestration layer. One thing that might be interesting is you can see on the uh, bottom left corner, you can see there's a pro version and trial that ends in seven days. So you can see there is a paid option for OpStack. But if we go back to the website and go to pricing, you can see there's also a free tier for personal non-commercial use. And this you can use to run containers, run Linux machines without any limitations or something like that. If you need a business and commercial usage license, license and you want some additional features, then you have to buy a pro license or an enterprise license. But honestly, I think if you're just a home lab tech nerd like me and, <laughs> and you just want to run a few containers on your local Mac or experiment with Kubernetes and a few VMs, then the free personal license is totally sufficient. So that's what I'm also using. I just still have the pro trial, but when it's expiring, I'm just using the free plan. But let's also take a look at some of the special features in OpStack that I believe make it even better than Docker Desktop or some other competitive programs like Portman Desktop. I think this is really, really nice for all the people that work with web applications in Docker or want to learn how traffic and load balancing works. It's really, really amazing. So when we go to the architecture and documentation page, you can see there are some pretty cool features, especially the domain name features. So you can see that Orb stack doesn't just work with the local host. So what I've just demonstrated in this example, it also runs a domain name that is called orb.local. So this is really nice to test web applications. You don't need any port numbers for web services. So if you have a Docker container that uses the port 3000, you can basically just ignore it because orb stack automatically detects what port the web application is using. And then it automatically routes the traffic to that particular port and it also issues secure HTTPS certificates for those services. So you really don't need to test any cert manager or traffic or something like that. You can really test web applications in a very secure way on your local device. It's pretty cool. For example, if you uh, want to run an Nginx web service with trusted uh, TLS certificates testing here on OpStack, you can just use uh, that example here. Uh, let's go to my project folder. And let's open this and create a new Docker Compose file, paste in that. And now this is just deploying a simple Nginx web server. You could also add labels for custom domains. So for example, if you want to have something like Nginx test1.local, this is totally fine. We can just go here and start the Compose stack. 
Now, if we go back to Orb stack, you can see there is a new Compose project. So Docker Compose projects are also indicated with a drop down project folder. And here, when we go to this container, you can see that it attaches the nginx test.1.local domain to it. So when we just click on this, it opens the browser to our nginx website. And as you can see, it, it also has an HTTPS connection with trusted TLS certificates. Really, really amazing. You don't need to configure anything or trust any self signed certificates in your browser. It's automatically done in ARP stack. Again, I love this feature so much because I often have web applications that I like to test on my device and now this is so easy. There's also an amazing integration for the Kubernetes cluster in ARP stack. So for example, if you want to test and expose service objects in Kubernetes for web services or you want to play it around with ingress controllers and load balancers like traffic or nginx, this is also really easy and greatly integrated in ARP stack. For example, you have a domain that is automatically attached to any load balancer services you deploy to the local cluster and you can also easily access any cluster cluster IP addresses from your local Mac. So to demonstrate this, for example, we can just deploy a simple Nginx. To get access to the ARP stack Kubernetes cluster, you just switch your config to use ARP stack. And then you can just use the kubectl command. It's also integrated in the installation of ARP stack. So you automatically have all the CLI features that you need. And here you can see there are all the containers that are currently running on my local cluster. So if we now want to deploy a new Nginx image, so for example, let's create a new namespace called Nginx and deploy it here. Now we also need a service object. So I'm going to use the type cluster IP for now. So this is usually only available and accessible within the local network of Kubernetes. So you can simply just copy the internal cluster IP object and open it in the web browser and then immediately get access to the pod deployed in Kubernetes by just accessing the local IP address. If we open ARP stack and go to services, you can see this is a service object for the pod that we have attached it to. And here you can also find the domain for the cluster. So this is usually the service name, the namespace, service object, cluster.local. And then you can access it by name as well. If you want TLS certificates and test ingress controllers, this is also possible very easily. So if we go back to the documentation, you can see you can choose from an Nginx ingress controller or traffic. So if we quickly want to deploy traffic to this cluster, we can also do it by just copying those commands here. Those load balancer service objects in ARP stack Kubernetes also get a different domain that is called k8s.orb.local, a wildcard domain that you can use to test the traffic ingress controller. You can also automatically access it in your browser. And then you can try the ingress controller. You can play around with it and try exposing cluster IP objects using traffic. I think this is really, really nice where you want to test some exposing of services, some certificate management, ingress controllers and all that stuff. It's really amazing. But let us also have a look at the integration of virtual machines in ARP stack where you can run fully blown Linux machines, but in a highly integrated and very lightweight way. So when you go to the documentation, you can see this is pretty similar to the Windows subsystem for Linux, so it would be something like a macOS subsystem for Linux, where you can just run any services in those virtual machines where you can access them from your Mac, also using the local host domain. And you can also have immediate access to any files on your Mac inside the virtual machine. But let me just show it to you. It's also pretty nice. So you can just go through the web UI, click on new machine and deploy a new Ubuntu machine or choose any other Linux distribution like Arch, Linux, CentOS, Debian and some other Linux distros that you might want to try out. You choose the version that you want. And if you want the CPU type Apple or the Intel emulation layer with Rosetta. So this also works great to test and try out x86 architecture uh, application on your Mac. It's pretty cool. And it's also really, really fast. The emulation layer in macOS runs runs also very, very fast. But I'm going to choose the Apple CPU type, which is even faster. I create the machine and now it's going to install a new Ubuntu 24.04 on my Mac.
So this probably just takes a few seconds, so it's not even taking a minute or so, and then the virtual machine should be ready for us. And you can immediately access this VM from your terminal when you just use the ARP command. So you can see the VM is now ready, installed, and you can easily access all the files using this. And uh, yeah, then you got the full virtual machine file system on your Mac. And yeah, let's just type in ARP in the terminal and then you got access to the VM. It's also as easy as that. And as you can see, this automatically gets me access to all the local files on my Mac from the Linux VM. So it's really similar to WSL2 where the virtual machine is highly integrated into the operating system and you can access the files vice versa and easily run any Linux application. So for example, we want to run a Python script, but I don't want to run the Python script on my Mac. I want to test how it would run on a Linux VM. I can just use the ARP command and then type in any command uh, after that, that will automatically be executed in the virtual machine. So for example, if we just run a simple Python script that will open a web server on port 8000, guess what happens when we type in the name of the virtual machine ubuntu.arp.local port 8000. You can see you get immediate access to the web application running in a virtual machine from your Mac without having to route any network ports or without having to remember an internal IP address or anything like this. It just magically works by using the name of the virtual machine .arp.local and then the port you want to access on the virtual machine. And yeah, this is so simple and it is so nice integrated. So you can easily test and run any Linux applications on your Mac. You can develop stuff, you can test it. And if you don't need it anymore, well, you can simply just destroy it when you go back to OpStack and stop it, delete it. And it's as easy as that. All right, so that's it about OrbStack. I think it is absolutely amazing and it will be my daily driver on Mac to run containers and VMs from now on. It has been super reliable and easy to use. Uh, but of course, I know love to hear your opinion about it. So please let me know what do you think about OrbStack. Leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to catch you in the next video. So take care. Bye bye.